Hi, we're back. I just want to introduce everybody to Mr. Robert Robinson. He's an author and also a Bigfoot enthusiast. Thank you, Robert, for doing this interview. Hey, it's a pleasure. Hey, thank you for uh, doing this. First of all, I want to start off. You were a former service member, aren't you? Yes, I was. I served the United States Army as a military policeman for 21 years. Well, thank you for your service. I really appreciate that, sir. Now, Robert, I have to ask, what first got you into Bigfooting? Uh, I would say if I was to pinpoint the exact moment, it would be the Legend of Augie Creek movie, like a lot of other people. Um, I saw it. It's, I didn't know, it, you know anything about it. The movie scared me coming home. In fact, it left an impression on me. I don't even, we went to a double feature at the drive-in, and I don't even remember what the second movie was. That's how much the movie scared me. But I started, you know, I went to school. I was talking about it, and the teacher said, you know, there's books about uh, similar creatures called Bigfoot. So I started researching. I started reading the books. And I stopped being scared, and I got, you know, I got interested in it. And I found there was more books on Ivan T. Sanderson and uh, John uh, Kill, and I just kind of, you know, I loved it. I just loved reading about that stuff. So, um, you know, I, you know, I had to do book reports at school. I would go grab one of those books, guaranteed A in my book report because I was, you know. But then, I, you know, I uh, went to high school, I, you know, a little bit, I remember taking friends of mine over to Missouri to go look for Momo, and we didn't really plan that one out too well. We ended up having to sleep in the car, didn't realize it was going to be that far of a trip. But anyway, uh, went to the military, didn't get to really pursue cryptozoology or legend tripping so much because, you know, the Army keeps you kind of busy. But I was able to read about it and keep up on it. Well, I retired in 2003 to Florida, me and my beautiful wife, and... Uh, I took on, a, you know, I got a job as a uh, JRTC instructor, but I found I had the time to actually go out and do it. So I hooked up with BRFO. They had some uh, expeditions going on in Florida. I hooked up with them, started going out, met a couple other people that did it, and it just started growing. My wife, uh, she had an interest in um, ghost hunting, so I went out ghost hunting with her. So she came out Bigfoot hunting with me. I went out ghost hunting with her, and we brought our kids with us, you know, because to get them away from the video games and the TV. And it just kind of progressed, and we found we heard about the term legend tripping, which encompasses all that stuff. So we started calling ourselves legend trippers, and we've been doing it ever since. In your book, you had mentioned that there is a section in there where you talk about interviewing uh, potential witnesses yes. to uh, to Bigfoot. And I'm assuming that uh, in your career, at some point in the military as a military police, you've had some sort of uh, uh, training on how yes. to interview in. Uh, Potentially interrogate uh, potential suspects. Well, you know, witness or the you know the um, the uh, the person that committed the offense. You know, we have to especially you know we read them the rights and they decide they want to make a statement. So you know the doors open. So we go ahead and uh, have them do statements. We have them do their statement. Then we go back and we ask questions on the statements because you know he waived his rights. He wants to talk. So it's basically the same thing. That's how I kind of treat it like a... I mean, I'm not going to say I treat every witness as a skeptic, you know. But, I, you know, I always kind of listen intensely just to make sure they're not, you know, it's one of those, you know, are trying to hoax me or waste my time. Um, I do notice that most people, in my experience, that I do, I, I do believe that they have saw something they can't explain, get very emotional. You know, especially females, you know, they break out crying and all this stuff. But then again, I've had some guys <laughs> break out crying on me, too. But, uh, you know, you know, I like to, you know, I like to question them about three times, especially if I don't think they're telling me the truth. Because sooner or later, the second or third time, I can nail them on their, on their, on their, um, their story if they're not telling me the truth. Now, I'm assuming that uh, you regularly do interviews with witnesses quite often. About how many have you been doing, or uh, how often do you do a year or a month? Gosh, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, a lot? It has been a lot. Um, when I've been hooking up with the Sasquatch hunters, we've actually had some witnesses come out. And I'll listen to the stories, and I'll mostly stand in the background like I'm not paying attention. And then I'll go back up to the person and say, tell me that again, you know? Okay, tell me again. And, you know, I had one person that, I mean, he could tell me everything that happened all three times without a, uh, without a, a glitch in his story. And I, I believe he saw something that he couldn't explain. Now, for your average person that just goes out on a hike in the woods, if they have an encounter or an experience, what do you recommend to them, especially uh, nowadays with um, the potential of uh, being harassed about seeing a Bigfoot? Well, how, do you, how would you handle that? Here's a story. I drove into a gas station one time with my Jeep. In uh, drove these boys in a big old pickup, about four of them, you know, country boys. 
Anyway, they got in there and they looked over and they saw the Jeep with the Bigfoot. And he goes, oh, you look for Bigfoot. Oh, there ain't no such. Oh, you wait. There ain't no such thing as no skunk ape. One boy, I think he was the driver, leaned over and goes, yes, there is. My dad saw it. I mean, the boys all just like, just stopped right there. And they went, what? He said, yeah, my daddy saw it. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they looked at me and they looked at the guy and stopped right there. Um, with you know, with the popularity of uh, the shows and, and some of the stuff going on, um, I think more and more people are actually coming out now and talking about it. Yeah, there were some times that some people didn't want to get ridiculed, but I think with the shows showing that, and that some people, okay, I'm not the only one who's seeing this thing, so, you know, maybe I should go talk about it. And, stuff. and all the reports seem to be somewhat similar description, is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. You know, people think for some reason in Florida that Bigfoot is only, you know, six foot or smaller. That's not true. He is actually eight foot and above. It's just that some of the reports are of maybe possibly a juvenile Bigfoot. You know. Now, most people are thinking about Sasquatch being in the Pacific Northwest. Are they anywhere else? Well, according to what I've been, you know, my research, they're all over the United States. The only place I know they're not is in Hawaii. <laughs> um, you know, I, I do I think some to this, yeah. Because, I mean, we've actually had reports going on for a long time, but they went as like a wild man. And most people would just picture some feral man sitting out in the woods with just a loincloth and all that. They didn't really give it much thought back then. But now, you know, they're starting to look into it, and they're looking at the report saying, wait a minute, that was a big hairy man. Maybe that wasn't just a, you know, a guy in a, a loincloth running around the woods. So, I mean, we've had the reports. It's just now we're going back and re-looking at them and realizing, oh, maybe we did have a Bigfoot versus a feral man, as I call it. Now, with your research, um, have you had an encounter or anything that made you believe in Bigfoot? Something that was just like, hey, there is something to this. Well, when we I was up with it, uh, we were doing it in the Bridges property, and we had two of our gentlemen get uh, uh, growled at the night prior, and then we found the tracks the next morning, and I went, wow. I mean, we found tracks, you know. Before, I just see, you know, castings made, you know, second, uh, second generation prints, but to actually find them yourself and find really good, distinct prints, I tell you, I said, wow, we really do got, you know, some squatches walking around here, this property right now. If you get stuck in an elevator and you have 30 seconds to uh, talk to a skeptic about the main speaking points of why uh, Sasquatch potentially exists, what, what would they be? What would your 30 seconds be filled with? 30 seconds, here we go. There have been reports since the uh, you know, settlers first came here. We have footprints, you know, we have hair. I realize that the whole DNA thing is on, but there's credible people, credible people, doctors, um, doctor, you know, doctors. There are, um, like I said, there are people of, in the community that have never, with a very good reputation, seeing something. That know a difference between a bear and what they're seeing. I mean, these hunters here know a bear. You know, and they've come over and they've told me, I said, yeah, we saw a bear over there. You know, well, this guy said, oh, this wasn't no bear. This was, thing was running, not walking, running on two legs. Bears can walk on two legs. They can't run on two legs. So, I mean, how can all these people be seeing this thing? You know, and you're trying to tell me it's not out there? Are all people just imagining it and we're all actually seeing bears that run on two legs? So, There's got to be a little bit more to this. I, I believe there is. I believe there's a large primate-type creature in various parts of the United States, in the woods, the swamps or whatever, making its home, trying very desperately to kind of keep itself, you know, its pods intact without humans, you know, coming in there and, you know, killing them and stuff. Really quick, how does our audience get a hold of you or see what you're doing here or even uh, look into your research? Well, I have a, a blog, a Legend Trippers of America, and I also on Facebook, Robert Robinson, Legend Tripper. And I have been writing articles for uh, Cryptid Culture and World uh, Explorers Magazine. But uh, the best way to get a hold of me is, uh, you know, my, my blog, Legend Trippers of America.